Coming up on this episode of Radio and Co. And um, my producer at the time, I talked him into it somehow. And I said, on Wednesday, we're only going to uh, read out analogue missives. So we got only postcards and letters. And it was the worst show I've ever done. Hello and welcome to the Radio and Co podcast. This week I'm absolutely thrilled because we're joined by Sean Keaveney, who is one of the nation's most beloved broadcasters. Mm. If you're not aware, and I don't know how you couldn't be, Sean started his career out on XFM mm. and he presented the BBC Six Music Radio Show for Breakfast Show for about 11 years or so and then he moved over to the afternoon, sh- afternoon slot. To say Sean was instrumental in Six Music is a huge un- understatement. He, his warmth, his humour and most importantly his sincerity made him an absolute cornerstone of the station. Um, he's since left Six Music, but thankfully we're not deprived of Sean from our airwaves as he's gone independent and created Community Garden Radio. So alongside that, Sean's got two podcasts. He's got The Lineup, where Sean guides music lovers like Ricky Gervais, Kay Tempest to reveal their dream festival lineup. And he's also got The Creative Cul de Sac, where Sean and his fellow creative guests talk and revisit their ideas that never made it to fruition. So welcome, Sean. Thanks for being on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much for having me. That was a, a lovely experience having an intro. I I, I, I use that device on my interviewers and my interviewees, but I don't, mm. I, I can, I can barely remember having one made for me. So it was a lovely experience. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad. I guess the roles are reversed a little bit today. Mm. I love that. You get to be, you get to be the subject and uh, all the attention is on you. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Laugh it up. Pressure's make off. Most of it, make, make most of it. So, um, I obviously mentioned the intro that you used to work for the BBC and now you've gone independent. Mm. So that's probably a big, big lifestyle switch. So how has that affected the old work to life balance? It's caused utter chaos, if I'm honest. Um, but, but uh, you know, a lot of good chaos and some not so great chaos. I think that when you work for an organization, when you're a company guy for 20 odd years, you know, I mean, really, I got my first proper job in 1997, I suppose. I used mm. to write radio adverts. And then I went, and then I started at XFM, and really all that for all that time. So that's getting on for twenty five years. I um I had a regular paycheck, and I had a paymaster, and yep. I was told where to go when to do it. And um, I don't know. I think I told myself that that was good for me, and being a sort of being of good northern stock, you know. It was like I, I like to sort of clock in and clock out and I'd take me lunch um, or dinner, as we would call it. Um, so I think I got used to that. I got inculcated into that sort of way of living and was afraid of not doing that and not being told what to do and where to be and when my money was dropping in. But um, there's an immense freedom, obviously, on the other side of that. It's just that you have to go through, you jump through some hoops to to get to a point where you're comfortable with it i think and now i'm a hustler like everybody else man you know like i, I know so many young people uh, to whom it's completely normal you, 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 mm. nobody expects to have a job for life anymore nobody expects i mean and, and there are good and bad reasons for that but um it's 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 weird to be nearly 50 and to be hustling um but that is where i find myself now and uh, yeah. the, the problem has been a little bit more I've I've thrown a lot at the wall because I panicked because I thought Christ I've got to pay my mortgage, um, and and actually quite a lot of it came off. So then I had to do a lot of work. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm actually way. quite I'm sort of in in my best version of myself. I'm quite lazy probably, so I'm yeah. doing I'm, I'm a bit busier than I'd like to be. <laughs> so is it so with your community garden radio now? You've obviously got full creative full creative freedom. But is that experience a little bit dampened by the fact you need to make money out of it to pay your mortgage? <laughs> yeah, it, well, it's really odd because um, it was a complete accident. Uh, that that's the only way I can describe it. It was a total accident. What 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 is what, what's currently happening? Um, 
Ben and Clive and I, who worked together on this community garden project, you know, last year, it was just a conventional podcast idea. Um, I had this cul-de-sac idea and we were working on that quite hard. And in my utter naivety, I thought, well, it's a great idea. And I mean, I imagine after six or 12 months, Spotify are going to be hurling money at me and like literally just backing trucks down the cul-de-sac, just dropping. Second you know. to Joe Rogan. Yeah. I used, to make, I used to make that gag a lot. Like, oh, you know, this, this time next year we'll be millionaires. Uh, not realizing that it's a very crowded marketplace and it takes an immense amount to cut through. Mm. And so by accident, just before Christmas, Ben sort of said, you know, that there's this technology out there, which means that you can broadcast live. And that's, mm. I know that you're good at that and that's what you like to do. Would you like to give it a try? Mm. And that's what we did. And the rest is sort of not history, but the rest is, is like what happened, which is we set up a Patreon and very, very quickly it grew because I think we ported across the hardcore of my radio listeners yeah. and we created this community garden idea, which has become a bit of a verdant paradise really, you know, and the money yeah. thing, the sort of the funding of it and everything didn't, it, did, it didn't really occur to us in a sense, you know, that was a completely secondary thing. We just thought, well, we'll set it up and it's a good forum. It's a good platform. And this is where we'll put our, we'll post all our stuff and do our radio show and see what happens. And it's, it just so happens that it has become a, a concern, a growing concern, you know, which is amazing to us. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's just testament to how loved you are as a broadcaster that you did bring across your um your hardcore legion you know your motley crew of um fans or so because the growth of um your radio station you know the um community garden radio has been quite it's been very impressive and it's only you know it's only been course of really like a few months um so you didn't expect or did you expect such a massive response no it was an inkling no, I think that I suppose it would be disingenuous for me to sit here and go, well, I just thought nobody would be interested, you know. I, I, mm. I think I, I after what after the last shows that we did at six, it was obvious to me that there was an appetite for the kind of thing that we do on community garden radio. And yeah. what was frustrating to me was and is to a lot of broadcasters, especially radio broadcasters, is that the it's as it is in television radio is very restrictive as to you know what you can put out there to a degree and some of that is really useful and 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 um and necessary you know yeah. offcom rules and licenses and things are all necessary because otherwise yeah. you don't want it to be the wild west where any any idiot can say whatever they like mm -hmm. however there's a flip side to it which means that it can be quite a vanilla experience sometimes listening to mm -hmm. you know you if you want to get a, get get across um, a slightly different viewpoint or or a slightly more playful one, or you know, if you want to play really a, a completely off the wall playlist or whatever, you're not going to get to do that. At Absolute Radio or Heart Seventies, all of these things I listen to and dip into myself. You know, I'm kind of fans of yeah. all these things. You know, Six Music, obviously, Radio Four does its thing. They're all amazing, but mm. it, they're not. The, the, there was a sort of there was a niche that wasn't being served I, don't, I didn't feel and so when we did set it up I, I knew that some of my listeners would would would, would get into it um, yeah. but I wasn't I was surprised at, at what level and how much and that the how ardent they are and how how much they contribute to it you know it's, it really is it's a hackneyed thing now to say it but it really it really is that the, the an analogy that I came up with this community garden has become a thing it's and it's incredible mm -hmm. We are all there with our, you know, sort of uh, metaphorical trowels, just making this thing grow, and it's great. Yeah, I think I think you've um, you've reminded me actually of um, many many years ago, and I was listening to a different. I don't think it was one of your six music shows, but it was a different six music show, and whoever the presenter was said that oh. They basically made this passing comment about how they only actually get about three song choices per. Um, mm. 
her show. And obviously Six Music, when it burst onto the scenes and stuff in terms of digital radio, it was such a refreshing take on radio compared to, um, you know, compared to so much commercial yeah. radio story where you can guess all the songs and stuff. Um, that I, you just, I honestly kind of perhaps naively thought that like the <laughs> presenters were picking those, you know, 30, 40 songs or so at the start. So um, I think now now it's probably a bit more obvious and stuff. I know they've got the playlist and stuff, so now it's probably a bit more obvious that um, it's you are going to get a lot more independence doing your own thing. And um, for those that really can connect with you and what you like and stuff, then you're obviously your own radio show and own station is going to be the absolute the gold mine. <laughs> it's the funny. Gold mine. It the is, broadcasting it, gold it, mine to tap into. It is amazing. I, and and I, I still have such jaw dropping respect for a lot of my colleagues. You know, I was listening to Gideon Cole last night and just thinking, Christ almighty, this guy literally does three hours. He does 12 hours a week of radio and he, he's got his, I think, I think his producer still Henry. And, but between the two of them, they really do put those shows together. And yeah. uh, very little input from the station. You know what I mean? It's like that's a work of art what those guys do, and it just yeah. it go, out it goes every day, and people don't even think about it. And obviously, in, on those daytime shows, there's a lot more input from a central um, sort of playlist. But you know, the, the, there's still a lot of input from the presenters. But with with what we're doing at Community Garden Radio, it's just the freedom is 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 unilateral. So whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And not in a libertarian way, not in a kind of shock jock way, not in a kind of, you know, offensive way, but in a, in a, it's just nice to have the freedom to, to just do, do things at your pace, the way you want to do it. And, and know that the people that are involved are there because they really want to be, you know, they're not passive listeners. They're very active. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this episode, then why not subscribe to our newsletter? You can get some tips, tricks, and general radio expertise direct to your inbox. Also, if you'd like to start a radio station, then you can try us for free for seven days if you go over to radio.co. So when, on that, when it comes to like kind of editorial oversight, are you just trusting your instincts in terms of what you put out or... Is there rules, personal rules that you kind of abide to? Like, who is anything governing Sean Keefe? <laughs> That's it. Like live and unleashed, you know, <laughs> Richard Pryor, Lenny Bruce. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you make a fair point, though, which is, <laughs> it is it, this kind of <laughs> radio format is quite un, unpoliced and unregulated. Mm. So, and and you know there's definitely a, um, a question mark there, and there's definitely um, a th- for for the for the responsible broadcaster or for the media minded person, there are questions to ask about the future of it and where it heads. But then it it, it seems to feed into questions for me that uh, about like how is Facebook a broadcaster or a platform? You know that that kind of thing is confusing to a lot of people, and I think that a lot of the platforms deliberately sort of obfuscate and say look we're just we're not broadcasters you can't hold us responsible for anything and that that has its own dangers and problems obviously and Mm -hmm. you get all kinds of worrying things out there but we're not on that scale we're not on that level we're just we've got this little lovely little unit of Mm like minds we're not i mean yeah if i'm honest you know, it does get a little bit political sometimes. And if I'm yeah. honest, I say I do skits and say things or make jokes that I wouldn't get away with it on the BBC. And that that's, no, that gives me pleasure. Yeah, but there's no dodgy business, though. You're not really on any kind of, um, you know, you're not really doing anything. I don't think so. Anything bad, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I am. I, 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 th- I do, to go back to the question in a sense, I do think that, that I've got a pretty good sense of myself and a pretty good sense of the things that I, I would stand up publicly and say, you know, and it's a bit like, especially now Elon's taken over Twitter, Jesus wept. Where does it, where, where that goes, we don't know, but you know, it's, I've, I've quite enjoyed using Twitter for, as a sort of humor platform, but of yeah. course it's also 
toxic and it's full of awful trolls and terrible things. Mm. But, um, but I do, you know, I do, I do like, you know, I think, I think I'm quite good at finding the line and saying, well, I would, I would say that to anybody, you know, yeah. that joke or that bit of satire in inverted commas, I believe that and I stand by it. And that's what, you know, I would say it to my mum, and I would say it at the town hall and I would say it on Twitter because that's what I believe. And I think as long as I stick to that, I'll be all right. Yeah, you're definitely consistent in the, in the regard that if you look at your Twitter feed and then you just listen to you and stuff, I feel like I'm getting the real Sean Keevney in every, every way that I interact with him, you know? God you know, help I, us. No, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so you said, right, you said that you're perhaps a little bit more on the lazy side, mm. but would you consider making community garden radio a full-time thing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, the thing that that's a good, that's another good question really. Like we've said, we've already sort of said out loud in plain sight, you know, to the, to the, the patrons, to the gardeners, we love to do more. And, mm. uh, and we, we probably, I think in time, that's what our aim would be to, to augment, you know, we've got this two hour show, on mm -hmm. Fridays and before it we have a, a mix and after it we have a mix and Ben and Clive have instigated this not lovely thing this week which is like an eternal playlist where we get the the gardeners to keep adding to this this streaming playlist where it's almost like I suppose you know in a mad world you could think it's that's a version of the six music playlist you know where you get three three or four thousand people adding what they think the best music in the world is together on this ginormous playlist. Mm. That's almost like a radio station in itself. But um, yeah, we would love to, we were looking into, I think it's, it's safe to say uh, different things that we could do during the week. So, you know, um, as if it keeps growing and we've got a bit more uh, resource, we can do another show. We could maybe, we could maybe do a, a session show. We could maybe do a, you know, all, there's all kinds of ideas being kicked around. So yeah, in, in short, yeah, we want to do more. Is there someone or, yeah, is there other people that you'd be really desperate to bring on board? No, I want it to be all about me, really. Yeah, okay, I, I just, I mean, I just think more, more of, no. Um, that's a, yeah, I mean, who, I mean, there was, well, what, one thing that I, this is a bit of a pie in the sky thing. But it would be nice to bring on a, bring in an established talent once a week. That would be great. Mm. Mm. And obviously you'd have to choose carefully because a lot of these people have got good jobs elsewhere, especially at the BBC, because that's the, if mm. they're really good, a lot of them are already employed. But, you know, I'm sure that there are people who we could, in the future, we could probably poach or, or we could sort of say, could you give us a couple of hours a week? Mm. Um, but also I, I love the idea of... of um, of having new talent, of, of of sort of finding the stars of the future, sort of thing, you yeah. know. Because I used to say that at six, like I've said that this to the management at six for years. Like, why don't you have a why don't you have an overnight slot? Even if it's just once a week, why don't you have an overnight slot where you put in untested talent and you put those shows up on BBC Sounds and mm. you give these people a platform? And they just couldn't, they didn't quite get it together, you know. But I think who knows, maybe we could do that one day. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be right, really, very exciting. Um, so, if we hark back to mm -hmm. twenty to thirty years or so, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you three questions. Oh yeah. About basically your um, yeah your career within the radio industry. First question is, what has changed in the radio industry that you wish was still the same? I'll give you all three now. What changes have happened that you're absolutely chuffed about? And thirdly, what is still happening in the radio industry that you just wish would hurry up and die? <laughs> well, that's good. So the first one is what, repeat the first one for me. The I'm... first one is, so what has changed, changed within the radio industry in your career that yeah. you wish was just still the same? Okay. So kind of that's change good. for the worst in your opinion. Change for the worst. Um, well, you, you know, you're talking to a very old person, you know. No. When I did, I actually did a radio 
uh, an audio module when I was at uni. Mm. And it was so long ago that we were sent home with a Ewer tape machine. I remember having it in my in my digs in my bedroom in Leeds. This uh, enormous antiquated machine that must have been manufactured in the sixties or the seventies, and they gave us the tape and they gave us the um, you know the the blade to cut the tape and the white tape to stick it together and edit. And I remember <laughs> I remember going, you know, I mean even even then in nineteen ninety one it seemed a bit clunky, you know. But that was just before the proper dawn of digital and all that. But what, I mean, what's changed that I, I do, obviously, because I'm an old git, I, I do miss some of that sort of the charm of that sort of the slowness um, of getting letters. I remember we did a, a breakfast show once in what must have been 2010. 20, mm. No, no, it was earlier than that. It was 2008. And, um, my producer at the time, I talked him into it somehow, and I said, "On Wednesday, we're only going to uh, read out analog missives, so we're only postcards and letters." And it was the worst show I've ever done by a long distance, because obviously you open a letter. There's nothing. There's nothing great. There's no great radio about opening a frigging letter and then just trying to. It, it's three pages, and you just sit there reading all this boring stuff, you know. So I. Maybe- Maybe you were before your time and it was like a great bit of AMS, AMS, uh, you know, just the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep saying I'm going to, Ben, that I'm going to do an ASMR. I'm going to sit here with a jar of pickles for an hour and just work my way through them. Um, But what, I I would say that it's weird that, I mean, I, I, okay. That's one thing. Great. I've I've thought of it. There's, there is one thing that's changed for the worse, and it, I've touched on it already, and that yeah. is the radio stations don't have the funds anymore because of the way that the, the infrastructure works and the way that, you know, sort of disaster capitalism works, that they can have overnights. And I came up on overnight shows. I did three and a half years at, at, at XFM on overnights. And it, mm. if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be mm. selling insurance. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was that that allowed me to be, to if I can use a, a, a pejorative swear word, shite for a long time. You know, I was really, really bad for a very long time. And that uh, facility allowed me to do that. And and so I would say that that's one thing that doesn't exist really anymore, that, sh- that it's a shame that it doesn't. Because you're live broadcasting, you know, uh, on a radio station and it's really exciting even though it's into 600 people 300 of whom might have uh you know medication problems or whatever but so i missed that and i think that's a, a change for the worst um but the other qu- question about what's changed for the better is i'm sure everybody says it but um the communication you know the 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 f- proliferation of it because when I first started doing live radio in the year 2000, you had email and that was it. That was mm. absolutely it. And even that, I couldn't believe at the time. I thought that was stunning. You know, that was a, a big leap on from the letters and the postcards. You know what I mean? But um, but now, of course, it's, you've got everything. I mean, I, and I argue that it's gone a bit too far because we use the Discord sometimes, don't we, Ben? And it's an absolute minefield. It's completely, I mean, it just does my head in complete. It's like being in the Matrix. <laughs> but but yeah so that's the the thing that i think has changed for the better the fact that you can as a broadcaster now you've got text you've got whatsapp you've got all of yeah. these things uh, and, it, and 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 also cart walls are amazing i mean i've made an entire career out of the cart wall the yeah. the, the the way that you could i couldn't have done that 30 years ago i just couldn't have done it and I, and so that's a big part of my style and my career. You know, the technology behind stuff like that is phenomenal. Um, and also the technology that you provide. The, 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 it was only in December that Ben said to me, you know, that we could do a radio show if we wanted. And because of what you you guys do mm. and platforms like that, wow. I mean, that's just unbelievable that, you you know, we anybody can, in a sense, I know that it's, it's another question, getting your – getting it getting people to hear it but like you can make your own radio i mean that's just science fiction to me 
So I think that's yeah. great. It is amazing. That is amazing. It really has uh, democratized it, hasn't it? Yeah. Anyone can do it with a laptop, and they um, um, and I'm not just talking about us. I'm just talking about that anyone can now produce radio with just a laptop and an internet connection. What in radio are you wishing will just hurry up and die? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, I what what? I think I think that I think what's good about. God, it's a really in- interesting one that, you know, I I, I still find um, all the usual bugbears difficult. You know, when, I, when I'm listening across the dial, uh, I, you know, adverts do my nutting, you know, but they're a completely yeah. necessary evil on certain stations. I completely understand that. But and, and that's in the old fashioned and linear style. I, I, I think that, you know, when, when you've got big stations putting out um, putting out radio to big amounts of people, you get a blandness uh, that is absolutely necessary and understandable. And it's not a criticism of of these um, stations or people who do them. Because and I've done it, you know, and I'll probably do it again. But I I, I don't like, you know, I, that's not what interests me. I, I, I sometimes there have been times in my career where people have said, "You could be the next Jonathan Ross, mate." Or you know what I mean? Or you could you could really go to the next level. And I've not done, and partially probably because I'm not I don't want it enough, partially because I'm maybe not talented enough in that way, or I don't I haven't put enough work in. But it's mostly because that's not my taste. My taste is what mm-hmm. the kind of thing that we do. It's this more slightly niche, slightly more interesting stuff. And so I'm in a very roundabout way I'm answering the question, which is um, you know, that that more mainstream, hey, and coming after the break, you can win tickets to see Michael Bublé. What about that weather? You know, that sort of, that style of, of broadcasting doesn't interest me at all, you know. But whether it, I don't, I don't really care. I don't want it to die. I just don't want to have to do it. No, fair enough. <laughs> and it's also it'd be, if it's not who you are, it'd be a bit sad having to do that and pretend, yeah. be, pretending to be something you're not in a way. that's it it's deeply corrosive after a while so uh, at least now you know i mean for better or worse i'm being exactly who i am yeah thank you for listening to this week's episode of radio and co if you enjoyed the conversation today make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss an episode radio and co is produced by radio.co the platform that can bring your radio station to life head to radio.co forward slash demo today to get started we'll be back soon